Welcome back, everyone. This is Dave from Corn Productions with my co-host Stacy here to talk about Extended Family Season 1, Episode 10, The Consequences of Familial Obligations. The episode's description reads as follows. When Jimmy Jr.'s annual Pinewood Derby is moved to the same night as Grace's last father-daughter dance, Jim finds himself suddenly having to choose between his chil two children. Before going any further, I'll tell you a couple of things. One, this is not a spoiler for podcast, so if you haven't watched the episodes, I highly recommend you go and check them out, and then come back and give us a listen. Secondly, if you're listening to one of the platforms that this podcast is now available on, please subscribe. You can also head over to my YouTube channel, Corn Productions, where additional content can be discovered. All right, Stacy, right. your thoughts on this week's episode? Um, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was fun. I mean, I feel like I always say the same things about these episodes. This yeah. is just, it's a cute show. Mm -hmm. And I really hope more people give it a chance. It's not like groundbreaking stuff or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, it's a sitcom. But, I mean, yeah. it's, it's cute. It's fun. I love I love this family. They're sweet. Um, So one thing uh, you and I were just talking <laughs> about before we started recording is this is the most unfinished screener that we've gotten so far on yes. this series mm -hmm. um so we get you know we get to see the episodes early so that we can talk about it and publish this as soon as the episode airs and um you know there's always like a few things right that aren't exactly air quality yet this time <laughs> i was like why is this not ready yet <laughs> um because there wasn't an episode last week right right yeah. so we took a week off of uh, extended family it's back tonight and I don't know. Are they falling behind in post? Maybe that that they're this like is that why we skipped a week because they just didn't have the next episode ready? I mean, possibly. Uh, there was like a few moments where I was like confused, like why is Jim sitting in a darkened subway car, and uh, why is there well, so no, much? He was sitting in a darkened subway car on purpose because the subway car was stopped. Okay, so that it was actually <laughs> supposed to look like that because it looked really weird. I mean, they might polish it a little bit, but yeah, yeah. he was sitting in a you know. Okay. In a broken down subway. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, also, there was like, you know, the green Yeah, screen. we had some green screens in our screener. And, and an animated uh, train running by at one point. <laughs> there was uh, some temp audio. There was uh, ADR cues, which is, you know, where they have audio they have to insert still. Mm. So they just like put words up on the screen telling us what's going to be said next. Um, there were some like temp transition photos, which we yeah. had that for the pilot episode. I don't think I've seen them since then. Right. And, um, you know, there was an active frame count going on the screen yes. the whole time, which yep. usually we don't get the count by the time we get uh, the screener. So it definitely still had a lot of tweaking to do. So uh, it's quite possible that the episode, uh, no, no, it is definitely going to be the case that the episode that we watched is not what you are going to be seeing, the you, the viewer who are right. watching us. So I'm, I'm anxious to actually watch this yeah. um, when it airs to see how, how different it is, mm -hmm. right? Because it's possible they'll completely change things and then things that we say won't make any sense. And it's happened to us before. And if that's the case, that's why. Right, yep. Because <laughs> we didn't actually watch what you just watched right. on TV when we recorded this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a fun episode. There were definitely some emotional beats, and I, I definitely like when there, there's uh, that uh, pathos involved in an episode along with the comedy. I don't like just... I mean, I, I, I still like the episode if it's, like, straight comedy, but I also kind of like when there's, like, some emotion involved in it and some yeah, pathos, as I just said. Right. And this episode definitely had that. We've at, got, that um, you know, real issues that you face in a family, not mm -hmm. even, you know... Not even in this situation where, you know, they're divorced and they're they're realigning how they work as a family. But right. in any family, this mm -hmm. type of thing happens. Yeah. Where you've got different events happening at the same time and you have to, you know, work around schedules that you don't control. Mm -hmm. And um, I think in the end, they, they found a, a, a way that works. But I, I do think they got there the hard way sometimes. <laughs> yeah. For the sake of the humor. Um, but let's just jump into it. All right. Let's do it. All right, so the episode opens with Jim and Grace practicing their dance moves for the father-daughter dance. Yeah, and this is Grace's last annual father-daughter dance at her school, which I was confused about. She's 14. Why is this her last annual dance? You think it should have happened sooner? Well, like, why isn't it going to happen next year? Is that not a thing that happens in high school? So is she in middle school? Uh, I would think she's like 14, right? 14. That would put her in like about eighth grade, maybe. Okay, so maybe, maybe that's... Maybe a freshman in high school. But I... I, I... I don't know. I don't know much about I mean, kids' I, dances, I, I guess. I guess 
I was older and uh, like in my grade in middle school. So, yeah, I'm not really totally So, sure. So the last father-daughter dance is when you're 14 because by the time you're 15, you want to actually go with a date to a dance and you're too embarrassed to bring your father? I mean, I think even by middle school, you'd be embarrassed <laughs> to bring your father to a, a, a date for sure. But uh, Well, Grace is enjoying this and she's, mm. she's sad that, you know, this tradition is possibly mm. uh, in danger. And oh, so they're practicing the step on a bug dance. Ah, okay. Which is really kind of ridiculous. Yes, but it, it's fun to watch. Uh, Grandpa Bobby walks in on this. Love Bobby. And Jim declares a break is needed so he doesn't die. And then, boy, can I relate to that. And Bobby comes with his knitting. Yes. Uh, apparently, Grandpa Bobby likes to knit. It's good mm -hmm. for his heart, I think he said. His brain it's and It's good health. for something. I don't but, uh, you know, not eating donuts is not part of this equation, apparently. I forgot what he said exactly. Something but like something that. Something along those yeah. lines. <laughs> Uh, Jimmy Jr.'s car causes Jim to slip and fall into the coffee table pretty darn hard to the point where it breaks and it, like, yeah. it's just a flat so mess. So Jimmy has um, the car that he's building for the Pinewood Derby. So that's a that's a Boy Scout thing. I know mm -hmm. that much. That he's built his car. And um, yeah, Jim takes a, a very uh, bad fall. <laughs> Which this was, you know, I love when we have physical humor. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, John Cryer's really great at it. He yes. delivers the physical humor. So at this point, I'm thinking this this is going to go in a completely different direction plot-wise. Where uh, basically Jim is going to be injured and incapable of going to the okay. father-daughter dance. I could see that. But that is totally That's not, not where That's not where we went, goes. no. So here's... This is probably my biggest complaint of the episode. Okay. We spent a lot of time in the living room at the nest, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of scenes happen in this room. Yep. We know what their coffee table looks like. It's a beautiful coffee table. It's round. Yep. It's it's kind of a cylinder, basically. Mm -hmm. This was not that coffee table. Well, maybe that, that one hadn't been inserted yet. Uh, so when we see the <laughs> final cut of this episode, it will be the normal coffee well, table? Well, no, because they're not going to redo the whole stunt. <laughs> I mean, you never know. I mean, the first time it looked pretty dangerous, like you could um, paralyze John Cryer for life. But... So this, okay, so this was like a little square breakaway coffee table that right. they used for him to fall through. Mm -hmm. Could we not have just made it look a little bit more like their regular coffee table that we see in every single episode? Yeah. Could I... it not have at least been round and the right color? Yeah, I didn't even notice. I was just like, yeah. Like, I know what their living room looks like, right? Because mm -hmm. we see it so often. Yes, yep. And it's like, this isn't... And it was pushed off to the side because they're dancing. Great, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it's, that's not their coffee table. And I'm sure next week their round coffee table will be back and we'll have forgotten about this. <laughs> I'm sure. Or maybe Trey replaced it without telling anybody. They're going to replace it with the round one, throwing off our entire continuity of order of episodes. Yes, that, that's, <laughs> maybe. Probably what, that's probably what's going to happen. So Jim gets up. He appears to be fine. Uh, except there's a giant needle sticking out of his butt. Yeah, one of Bobby's knitting needles has uh, punctured his, his rear end. Which he is initially unaware of, but everybody else is very aware of it. Like, no, don't sit down, Yeah, no. good thing they stopped him yeah. from sitting down. Bobby rips it out of him. I'm not sure that's the smartest move in It's the world. usually not, but it's probably not a big deal, you know, in such a soft tissue area. Mm. You wouldn't want to do that, you know, in your <laughs> torso. Or if it was sticking out of your Where there's throat, like, or... you know organs and things yeah, yeah but um this is the second time that the opening in an episode made me kind of cringe <laughs> at jim's physical pain yes this is the yes. second time he's had like some kind of medical thing that i'm just like oh my god and i'm not squeamish i love horror i am i am i love horror but like this and then the whole mole thing mm -hmm. are like oh these are a little a little rough for me <laughs> right and then our credits when we come back Julia returns with orange chicken and Trey. Jim thinks he'll be healed up for Friday for the father-daughter dance, but Jimmy throws a monkey wrench into the works, revealing that there's a derby that... Uh, my that the been... Pinewood Derby is the same day. Mm -hmm. And the parents are like, no, it's next week. But apparently they changed the date, and Jimmy forgot to give his parents the memo. Yes, and of course, uh, he doesn't seem to know what a memo is. And then they go on this little spiel where it's like a memo, memorandum, memorandum, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, so. Yeah. Um. So, okay, I know I said that the table was my biggest complaint, but I just had kind of a negative comment here, too. That, you know, Julia and Trey came and they've got the chicken. Yep. Is it always parent trade-off day? Yeah. Like, it feels like every day that we meet these this family, it's parent trade-off day. I don't think it. I don't think that was the case in every episode. I think there was, like, at least a one occasion where it wasn't parent trade-off day. But, like, Jim's here. 
Yeah. Julie and Trey are coming. Jim's mm -hmm. going to leave because, you know, it's not, this is the trade-off. Right. They do this trade-off once a week, but it feels like we hit it right. every time. Yeah. Or do they just, like, always have dinner together? I, I <laughs> Sometimes, it kind of seems like they just hang out on a constant basis. Right? And it doesn't matter who, <laughs> whose day it is or not. I mean, if that's the case, cool. They I spend mean, an awful lot of time together. Yeah. Yes, it does seem like that. Um... Okay, anyways. So, yeah, uh, Jimmy never cleans out his backpack. I can certainly relate to that. I, I, don't, I don't think I was any better at this when I was a kid myself. Um, both kids want him to go to their various things. Jim asks Julia for help because he doesn't know how to resolve the situation. And Julia suggests that she go with Jimmy Jr. But Jimmy doesn't want that. Uh, and, yeah, he he's, thinks that won't be cool to bring his right. mom. Uh, you know, from his perspective, I definitely get that. I get that. Uh, then she suggests that she go to Grace's dance, but Grace also doesn't want that. She doesn't think it'd be cool if, uh, you know, she shows up with her mother to a father-daughter dance. Right. And, you know, it might be cool if, you know, they were actually a lesbian couple, but there's no lesbian couple in sight here. So right. that's not the case. So therefore, it is not cool. Grace wants Jim to make a decision. Uh, the kid that made him a father or the other kid. And that was a really funny line delivery from Sophia Capana there. Um... So Jim decides to flip a coin, and Julia argues her way out of flipping the coin. Right. She has more responsibility yeah. for flipping wrong. Right. Um, so they get Trey to do it. Yep, of course. They always get Trey to do the dirty work. Uh, Grace wins the toss, and Jimmy thinks that this is a ridiculous way to parent, and yes, it very much is. <laughs> I would agree with that. Uh, Trey feels responsible for, you know, Jim being upset, thinking that he caused the situation. I'm not sure of his rationale here. I don't know why he's taking the blame for it. Cause, because uh, 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 Julia convinced him that, you know, the flipping is so important. Right. <laughs> so he must have flipped wrong. Right, he must have. Uh, Trey goes and talks to Jimmy and ends up deciding Trey should go instead. Because he seems to know a lot more about things than, you know, his mother He would. should go to the Derby. The Derby, that's what I meant. Um... And, you know, his friends would probably be really impressed with that. Yeah, bringing, absolutely. You know, the, you know, owner the Boston the Celtics. Celtics owner? Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm surprised it didn't come up sooner. Right. Uh, and touches... And by the way, Grandpa Bobby ate all the chicken yes, while this was happening. <laughs> of course he did. Wow, he has a big stomach. Uh, and, you know, he, Jimmy basically ends up referring to Trey as his stepdad. Yeah, his, which his really, future stepdad. Which really moves Trey uh, to... And he, at first, I'm not sure what... How, how he's reacting to this because he's acting just strange yeah he, basically he's trying to hold in his emotions and not cry right this is the first time you know that i think anybody's mm. referring to him as right. a stepdad right um because of course you know they're not married yet they're engaged but he's like oh yeah i i am gonna be your stepdad and and he was like touched that you know jimmy thought of him that way right and was accepting him to that level mm -hmm. and uh so you know he's concerned that julia is gonna be upset that that Jimmy doesn't want her to go. And that's a recurring theme through this entire episode. Nobody yep. wants Julia. <laughs> um, but she gracefully bows out. So the plan now is Jim's going to take Grace to the dance. I was about to call her Sophia. Jim's going to take Grace to the dance. Both are accurate statements. And uh, Trey's going to take Jimmy to the Pinewood Derby. Now, I have a question for you. What do you think the right answer was? I'm not sure that Like, they're... without flipping a coin... What, what, how do you think this should have played down? And, you know, forgetting everything that happens later. Because these plans, we know, is going to soon go up in, in smoke. <laughs> I think that Jim definitely should have gone with Grace to the father-daughter dance. Because it was the last one. Right. Uh, so I think that was the correct decision. And I actually think that Trey ending up with uh, Jimmy Jr. also makes sense. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, he, he seems to have a lot of knowledge of the Derby. And like I said, I'm surprised they didn't come up with that decision sooner. Yeah, I, I do think that where we landed at this moment is mm. it would have worked best. I, I agree. Um, you know, Grace wants her dad to come to the father daughter dance. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, fathers usually are the ones who do the scout things. Yeah. But it wasn't his last time in the Derby. He's right. going to do more. Yes, absolutely. He's done more before. Mm. He does this every year. And it doesn't require, like, the word father's not in the event. Right. Right? So somebody else can go with him. And that's the great thing about this family is, you know, they got two dads now. Right. And, and actually, a grandpa. Yeah, exactly. If you want to throw him in, there's a yeah. third dad. So, you know, the problem this family's facing, they have four grown-ups to help with two kids. Yes. They can make this work. Absolutely. Um, It's much harder on, say, a single parent. 
mm -hmm. who doesn't have another person to step in and do these things. Right. So they're actually have a lot less of a problem than they're acting like they have. Right. I mean, I, I can still see where there'd be some conflict, but sure. Ultimately, sure. ultimately, I think uh, that where we land here is the correct way to go. Yeah. Of course, that's not where we're going to land. Uh, no, 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 no. So uh, Jim is getting a tux. It's So it's the night of the dance yeah. now. Uh, Trey is prepared to take Jimmy to the Derby. Jim is stuck on the green line. I think that was the term that they were using. Yep, the green line. Uh, the green line subway train is stopped. Mm -hmm. So he's on the subway. As you mentioned, it's very dark. Mm -hmm. Like, I, maybe they'll lighten that up a little bit in yeah. post. But yeah, I mean, it was I, a very dark scene. <laughs> I don't think the lights just go completely off if your train breaks down. I think you still have lights on. There should be some kind of look, like an emergency yeah. light. Um, so but the train's lost power, really. Mm -hmm. So they're, he's sitting in the train. He doesn't know when it's going to get going. The dance starts in an hour. Grace, of course, is upset. Um, like you said, Trey has arrived. He's ready to take Jimmy. He's prepped for this. He's mm -hmm. got snacks. He knows everything he's supposed to do. And, um, but yeah, they don't think Jim's going to make it. So right. they have to make some decisions to change their plans and grace tells her mother it's not that she doesn't want to go with her mother it's that she doesn't want her to go with her and i thought that was another funny line uh she ropes in trey once oh, again wait what? before I, well, no that's not where we're at okay <laughs> um bobby is supposed to come at this point okay yes yes okay so jim says Grandpa Bobby. Oh, I did skip some lines. Yeah, yeah. Grandpa Bobby. See, they, they changed course so many times yeah. throughout 10 minutes here. Grandpa Bobby's on his way right. already. Jim already called him. He's coming yeah. to escort her to the dance, and Jim says he'll meet them there. Right. And then Bobby, because he's a bit of a butthead to the cab drivers, ends up with issues with the cab driver and ends up not being able to make it. Yeah, so he's Bobby's trying to get there. Jim's trying to get there. Um, Grace is cool with Grandpa Bobby taking her as long as he doesn't wear his powder blue suit. Which he seems to be about to do. Uh, of course, he is wearing his powder blue suit when we see him in the cab. But didn't she love his vintage clothes? Haven't we covered that already? Yes, we have. And, uh... I think his powder blue suit's pretty cool. Her, her line is basically, uh, about, uh, Grandpa Bobby going is, well, maybe he's on his third wife. You never know. Like, that, that's that Right. She's like, so... that's, you know, at least he, he can pass as a dad. Right. Um... But yeah, he gets kicked out of the cab before even arriving to the nest. Cab mm. driver kicks him out, and he doesn't want to pay the fare right. that he already accrued. So the cabbie, like, takes his knitting bag, which right. is weird. Yes. And no, you can't just steal something from somebody. Right. Um, even if they owe you money. Two wrongs do not make a right. But it turns out his wallet was in the knitting bag. Mm -hmm. So now Bobby has lost his entire wallet. That is unfortunate. That's unfortunate. So instead of paying for the cab, he now has no money or credit cards or id or anything and um julia says she's gonna send a uh, uber for him but he's like now nah, i'll just get another cab and ditch them when i get closer right okay bob <laughs> right yeah you can just keep doing that forever and ever and ever uh but so 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 yeah they end up deciding so yeah they have no confidence that yeah. bobby's gonna make it right. either at this point and that's when um julia says she'll go to the dance and grace is like nah Right, and instead opts for Trey, and once again she refers to Trey as the stepdad, yeah. and he once again gets very, very emotional. Yeah, he's emotional. like, they're both saying it. <laughs> uh, they end up leaving things up to Jimmy to decide what's going to happen. Right, because he was already promised, you know, that Trey would go with him. Right, and he decides on taking Mom and tries to negotiate for a bigger room. And instead, with the, the conversation with uh, Grace, ends with, okay, you get five arguments that you automatically win and oh by the way this is one of them so you only have four left right so that's his his kind of a uh, constellation prize for agreeing to take his mom to the right. derby is um he's gonna win the next five arguments one's you so he's got four left julia argues with jim over the phone uh, i forgot what that was even about okay so jim calls and um Julia gives the update that Grandpa Bobby isn't here. Right. And Trey's going to take her to the dance. And, right. And, you know, Jim doesn't like that idea. No, Because no. he doesn't want uh, Trey to take her to the dance because, you know, he feels a little threatened by Trey. <laughs> right. He doesn't want to be replaced. Uh, Bobby arrives and instead goes with Jimmy to the derby. Uh, Jim is in the subway, leaves a voicemail, and he misses his train, and we see an animated train drive by him. Uh, so, we're not going to see that in the actual episode, <laughs> I don't think. So, yeah, Bobby, um, 
Bobby gets there and he guilt trips Julia into letting him go to the Derby instead of Julia. He's like, yeah, you know, grandpas live forever. Right. I can just take him next year. Right. Yeah. Uh, but AKA I'm going to die soon. Why couldn't they both go to the Derby? I mean, yeah, that's a perfect. I point. get why you're not bringing your whole family to the dance, but right. why couldn't they both go to the Pinewood Derby, Grandpa and Mom? Actually, there's no particular reason why they both both could have gone, for that matter. You're right. Yeah. Good point. Uh, and so, so yeah, what's happening with Jim is he had decided to get off the train and he's walking through the subway tunnel. Would they even have allowed that? Well, probably not. I don't think they're going to let you climb out the window of a train. Right. But but he did it, and uh, the, so the train passing, he says, "That's my train." So if he had just stayed on it, he'd yep. have been cool. But now he's like in the subway tunnel walking, which is really super scary and dangerous. I would not be doing this for darn sure. Yeah. So Trey and Grace are at the dance and they're doing swing dancing. Yeah, Trey had taught her how to swing dance. Yeah. And they've completely taken over the dance floor. All the kids have parted <laughs> ways. And, you know, and that makes sense. Like, cool. Look at that. That's that's Trey Turner. That's, right. That's his last name, right? I forgot. Uh, owner of the Boston Celtics. Like, I don't think it's Turner. Trey. Something or other. Trey Taylor. Taylor, that's Trey right. Taylor, owner of the Boston yes. Celtics. Like, that's cool, right? So yeah. I, I can see them being impressed by this. Mm -hmm. Jim um, ends up arriving. He gets there, and, you know, he doesn't look any worse for the wear. His yeah. suit's fine. He didn't die. Yeah. So you he, get eaten by rats. He got there. Uh, Jim wants to do, um, well, no, not Jim. She, Julia, not Julia. Grace. Grace <laughs> wants to do one more dance with Trey, and Jim ends up slinking away, and J Trey realizes Jim's disappointment and fakes an injury so yeah he can't dance he says he pulled a hamstring yep. and and kind of you know gives jim the dance that he wants and uh jim silently thanks trey he fully knows what he just right. did there and like what this is more demonstration of the bond between trey and jim in a more subtler way right and what like, like i said i love this relationship between these two men uh it's definitely a highlight of the series for me um and again the whole dance just gives the floor to them. And now it feels a little weird. Mm -hmm. It made sense for Trey. You don't think... But uh, now they... you're giving the whole dance floor to, to uh, Grace and her dad. Right. Like, why is nobody else dancing? <laughs> so Julia and Trey talk about getting her, their feelings hurt by the kids. Like, she basically says that she's immune to it. And, uh, you know, G uh, Jimmy's... Uh, um, so Trey ends up saying, like, you know, uh, I stepped up. And then when Jim arrived, I stepped away. And Julia's talking about how uh, basically everything is about the kids' feelings. Well, in this specific case, it's not about uh, the kids' feelings because Grace wanted to do another dance with uh, Trey. She right. was fully willing to do that. So this was about Jim's feelings and not the kids' yeah, feelings. Yeah, but this now. conversation's really about the fact that nobody wanted Julia to go anywhere. <laughs> right. And she she basically was, you know, She not... was like, I'm okay. And she said, you know, this is what it's like every day to right. be a mom. Mm. Except for the first two hours of Mother's Day. <laughs> right. Yep. You, you get uh, recognized and appreciated on that day. Uh, so Jim and Grace arrive back. And Grace had an amazing time. And then Jimmy and Bobby returns. And he plays fourth. A new record for him. Yeah. And uh, basically, Jim says he never did any better than 10th. Uh, Bobby and Jim leave, and Bobby's like, yeah, I found a cabbie with, uh, who hasn't heard of my reputation. It took me a while and another rewatch to realize that Bobby was referring to Jim. Uh, because Jim is the one taking him home, I think, right? Oh, maybe. I That went over my head, if that's the case. Yeah. Uh, Grace argued... It would make sense for him to take him home. He's, right. They're both leaving at the same time. Right. Grace argues another win for Jimmy out of his account over ice cream over ice cream flavors yes yeah. and uh you know she's really suckered these out of him real fast yeah because she doesn't want to save them for anything important right you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, jimmy tells trey he's going to be a great stepdad and once again he gets really emotional you know he, he's not crying he's just uh producing manly water droplets yeah as he's I like really found his place within yes. his family and yeah. everybody's getting along really well mm -hmm. and as i said it's it's a sweet, fun little story. Yeah. Yeah. It's not and high stakes. It's, do you know, know what I noticed in this episode? What did you notice? We did not get a single interview style scene. Oh, yeah. Every episode until this has had at least one. Now, I'm kind of curious if they're going to like place one. There in. might be one that we didn't see yeah, that they're going to yeah. stick in. That's totally possible. But as of what we saw, not a single interview style scene. And I wouldn't have missed it if I wasn't looking for it. Right. No. If I wasn't keeping track of that. Yeah. I feel like we don't need them. I no, feel like it's really perfectly don't. good for them to ease out of that. People mm. didn't people didn't like it in the pilot. Nope. Um, I do think they way overdid it in the pilot. I think <laughs> the last few episodes have been much more subtle, where it's just one or two small scenes. 
but yeah this week we didn't have any at all so i'm curious when i actually watch it live which i will do because i want to see how um all the special effects come together <laughs> yeah i i have yet to watch it live i think well i'm probably not even going to watch it live tonight but you'll uh, watch it on Peacock. yeah yeah i definitely will uh to check it out to see what it ends actually... up looking like <laughs> right uh because that, there was various points where i was confused like because of the rough cut yeah it's like oh yeah oh yeah because i'm watching a rough cut that's why it looks like this yeah that's but... why there's a green screen with tape on the wall yeah instead yeah. of you know the city of boston <laughs> <laughs> all right so do we have anything else to say about this episode uh we knew the name of the next episode but i don't think we actually saved that to know what it was now uh it's something <laughs> <laughs> yeah something to do with something um yeah i don't remember what the episode is offhand but i definitely did look it up i'm gonna pull it up while you just uh continue talk. to babble Keep and babbling talk. for a second all right yeah so we have the next episode coming up we already have a screener for it we didn't realize that i haven't watched it yet nope um, the screener i think just came out while we were getting ready to hit record on this one yeah i only noticed because i was looking for something that i didn't end up finding but that's perfectly okay um so yeah I need one more second. One more second. All right. Episode 11 is going to air on March 12th. And it is called The Consequences of Writing Things Down. Yes. I knew there was writing in the mm. title. But... Uh, when Jim embellishes his yoga abilities to impress a woman, Julia must step in to save him from looking like a fool. Oh. That sounds like a fun one. It also sounds like every episode ever. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> So, yeah. So, we'll be back next week with that one. Yep. And uh, keep watching. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Stacey can be reached at. I can reach on Twitter, X, Instagram, and threads at TVN Coupon Talk. If you like this video and want to support the channel, there are a number of ways to do so. You can join one of my Corn Productions Facebook pages. You can follow me on Twitter at Corn Productions. You can buy something from the Corn Productions store on Zazzle. You can buy me a copy, which is a way to support content creators such as ourselves. You can join the Corn Productions membership for 99 cents a month. That's a new way to support content creators such as ourselves. And of course, you can like, share, and comment on this video <laughs> as well as subscribing to our channel. This is Dave and Stacy from Corn Productions signing off.